Luke chapter 19, starting with verse 1, we're going to read through 10. I believe God specifically wants to speak to us today. Jesus entered Jericho, made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. Need to stop there, turn to your neighbor and tell him, don't let rich mess you up. Don't let rich mess you up. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead. Don't try to peep my whole card. Y'all ain't gonna know where I'm going. He ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road. For Jesus was going, Jesus was going, Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. The people were displeased. Great place for you to look at somebody and just tell them, everybody ain't going to like what God does in your life. Boy, I feel like something getting ready to happen in this room. He is going to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. It's amazing how everybody knows what your sins are. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. My assignment today, we're in this preaching series called Church Jesus' Way. Church Jesus' Way. And specifically today, my assignment is to minister from the subject, the place of opportunity. The place of opportunity. Can you just say that with me? The place of opportunity. Say it one more time. The place of opportunity. Father, I pray for anointing that will enable me to make the words be clearly. I claim the authority to share the gospel. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The place of opportunity, the place, the place of opportunity. It's dawning on me that God is raising up new voices in the body of Christ. And last Sunday, as I listened to the next generation of me minister the word, the statement that jumped out to me from Pastor LJ's sermon was, and it indicted me, Dr. Angie, that if Jesus was to start over again right now and was getting ready to birth the movement, and he came to our churches and was looking for the 12. Would I make the cut? Minister Valencia, if Jesus was to walk in here right now and say, I'm getting ready to start a new movement, and I need 12 people. And he began to survey the room, read our resumes. Would we get chosen? Okay, that didn't hit you. I started to see it this way. Bro, I saw it as a job fair. If Jesus put an announcement out on social media, itinerant preacher born without a father from Nazareth, attempting to start new ministry, job fair and accepting resumes at the Mount Sunday morning. And Jesus came in and set a table right there and we all lined up, came up to the table, and began to review our faith resume. At the end of the day, there's only 12 openings. 
What would differentiate you from your neighbor that they would make the cut? Okay. Clark remembers this. When we were in high school, went out to bas for basketball, it wasn't apathetic like this day. When we went out for basketball in our high school, 150 guys showed up the first day to try out. The coach walks out and says, watch this, Ricardo. He says, well, 150 of y'all are here. I only have 15 spots. I'm not a great mathematician, but I'm like, that's 10%. So that means 90% of us going to be buying a ticket to the game in a few weeks. He said, and I don't have time to talk to each one of you about your skill. i never forget this. He said, so can I get the first 25? Line up on the end line. When I blow the whistle, run to the other end of the gym and run back to this line. We start running. We come back. The first five, you stay. The other 20, you are released. We ain't dribble no ball. We didn't shoot a ball. He didn't ask us if we knew what a pick was. Well, I, I, I'm not the brightest bulb in the pack, but I'm a critical thinker. After I saw what he was doing, I said, okay, let me. He said, the next 25, I looked at that 25. I said, oh, I don't know if I can beat 20 of them. I backed up to the wall, let them run. He said, next 25, I saw some guys limping up to the end line. I said, yeah, this, this is my group right here. This is my group right here because I think I can take at least 22 of these guys. Watch this, shout you on the way. I ain't got to outrun all of them. I just got to make sure I'm not in the last 15. So that's how the first day he cuts the... What would happen if God walked in here right now or stepped into online and said, I need 12 people, produce their giving record. You would say, why he checked that? He, 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 he didn't ask me, could I pray? He didn't ask me, do I come to church? He didn't ask me if I'm an intercessor. He didn't ask me if I'm saved. That's what happened that day. Now, I'm going somewhere because you know what's so amazing about this text? Is Zacchaeus is the least that you would expect Jesus to choose. I think that's what's happening right now. Last Sunday, all I saw was, okay, God, y'all know I think I'm cutting edge because I don't wear a robe. You know, because I, I used to think you couldn't preach without a robe. And then last Sunday, the dude coming up in here, watch this. I'm going to show you something, be a little personal real quick. I said, God, I'm having problems with this. I'm riding to church last Sunday. I said, God, I'm having problems with this. Brother up there in some fishing stuff and all this, I said, God, I just want to let you know I'm having some tr trouble with this. He said, he looks like you 20 years ago. And thank you, one clap over there. Um, because those of you that have been in the church in that amount of time, one Sunday I preached in dark glasses. I was Bartimaeus, and the whole sermon I couldn't see. I was going like this. I, I was just blind Bartimaeus. Another Sunday, boy, another Sunday I came out. I'll never forget Dr. Andrew Ray Barrow had gotten me a, a Chesapeake jail suit. The only time in my life I've ever been in a jail suit. And what I had done is he had brought some handcuffs. I let him handcuff me at the beginning of the sermon. I'm in a jail suit with the number up there, and I'm preaching about he that the son makes free is free indeed. I got shackles behind me, and at the end, boy, I'm hooping, and I come down to the communion table. Do, nobody in church knew that I had already hid the keys to the handcuffs on the communion table. So I come down to the communion table with my back to the communion table, and I'm working them handcuffs behind me. And I said, I just want to let you know that once the Lord sets you free, bam, folks, ah, 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 they were going crazy in our little church down the street. And God said, the reality is he is you 
20 years ago, and now you got to understand that God is trying to go after and thinking and operating differently than church. Zacchaeus, come down. So I want you to understand that I think church is not supposed to be where we come with the mentality and motivations that we do now. I think it's the place of opportunity. And what are the opportunities? Here it is real quick. I took a long time to get us there, but watch this. I think what God is doing is reminding the church that the opportunities of the church and the reason why the church exists is, number one, it's supposed to be prioritizing instruction. You know why a whole lot of people don't like church? Because we come, we shout, we clap, but we don't learn. And the next generation is like, look, it's time out for just coming in there and making me feel good. When I leave, I need to know a little bit more than I knew when I walked in the door. I dare you to look at somebody and tell them, I come in here to learn. I don't come in here to see what you got on. I don't come in here to see who's singing praise and worship. I come in here because I need to know more about what God requires of me and what I need to require of God. Is there somebody that can teach me something? Okay, watch this. Could it be, when we look at the text, here it is. He says, salvation, look at verse, look at verse 9 and 10. Salvation has come to this home today. For this man, watch this, y'all. Y'all know I got to mess with us. Come on, MVP, shoot your boy some hearts. There's one word in these verses that convicts us, Dr. Angie, and indicts us. Watch this, Aisha. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a, ooh, that word. See, see, the scripture would read contextually totally different if we said Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a son of Abraham. That's the whole different concept right, context right there, Marino. If he had just said, this man has proven that he's a son of Abraham. But something must be going on in this church outside of the building that he adds one more word to the context. Here it is. Y'all can't clap in the house. Clap online. Watch this. He says, for this man has shown himself to be a, which implies that I can write it another way. For this man has shown himself not to be a fake. Okay, okay, I'm by myself right there. That's a shame. In other words, Wallace, what he's saying is, I'm just looking for somebody that's true. I'm just looking for somebody that's real. I'm not looking for somebody who knows how to do church. I'm not looking for somebody who knows how to wave their hand. I'm not looking for somebody who knows how to display the show. I'm looking for somebody that when I look at them, they come real with me. I dare you to look at somebody in the room and just tell them he's looking for true folk. He's looking for folks that's not covering it up. He's looking for folks that's not trying to pretend. He's looking for folks that are not trying to put on the act. He just wants people that will come in and be real. So the first thing I think, if this is going to be a place of opportunity, is we've got to prioritize instruction. Number two, watch this. This is so interesting to me. It's got to be a place that provokes inspection. Mm, okay. Okay. I'll see if I can show it to you. Have y'all ever noticed the, the dialogue in the text? Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor Lord, and if I have cheated people, now hold on, hold on, hold on. If I have cheated anybody, okay? See, see y'all going to act like you don't know where I'm trying to go right now. Chances are, talk to me somebody, chances are, Zacchaeus really knows he fornicated last I mean, he cheated somebody. Zacchaeus already knows, yeah, I gossiped. I mean, I cheated somebody last night. Okay, okay, okay. 
Zacchaeus already, I know your neighbor can't clap. I keep going. I'm like Kimberly a couple of weeks ago. Tell your neighbor, just scoot the feet in because I'm going to get ready to come down. Zacchaeus already knows. Yeah, I lied on my girl. I mean, I, I, if I cheated anybody. Here's what's so amazing to me. Watch this. Nina, nowhere in the story does Jesus Peacock bring up his failures. Oh, God, I'm going to preach myself happy. Nowhere in the dialogue does Jesus even go there like, you know you need to get your life right. Nowhere in the text does Jesus raise his shortcomings. Because I have discovered that when you get to Jesus and you get intimate with him, he does not have to remind you where you have messed up. When you get close enough to him, you will remind yourself. Oh, I'm by myself. I wish I had three worshipers on this side. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, I don't need you to tell me where I messed up. All I need to do is get close enough to him. I don't need you to point out my shortcomings. All I need to do is get closer to him. I don't need you to tell everybody on Facebook how bad I am. All I need to do is get closer to him. And when I get close to him, there is, you know what? That's what I've discovered why some people don't really want to get to know God. Because it's hard. <laughs> this is going to be a good tweetable quote I'm going to give you. It's hard to be fake in fellowship. Yeah. You can't fellowship with him and be fake. No, baby, you lying to yourself. You can't walk with him in the garden and be putting on ass. No, baby, I come to tell you, you can't stand in the light and not see all the imperfections. I'm telling you right now, there is nothing more humbling. Last night, case in point, thank you, Holy Spirit. Last night, I'm on the side of the bed, and me and God, now you know elders out of town, so I'm in the bed, I'm getting ready to get in the bed, and I'm on the side of the bed, and I start praying, and anybody ever had this happen? You start praying, and then your prayer moment rolls into worship. And it ain't no organ, no keyboard. It's just you and God. And I'm on the edge of the bed last night, and my prayers started to translate into worship. And I started to say, God, I want to thank you. God, I just want to thank you. God, I want to thank you. And it was like I was stuck, like I was the old record that you had to put the, men, the money on the needle because it would get stuck. I kept saying, God, I want to thank you. 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 And I was trying to get the next words out, but I couldn't get them out because I was stuck on, God, I want to thank you. 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 I don't know what's wrong with your neighbor. God, I want to thank you. God, I want to thank you. God, I want to thank you. Then the tears started to fall. God, I want to thank you. God, I want to thank you. God, and then I was glad I was in the bedroom by myself. I said, God, I want to thank you. I got so loud that the dogs came up like, you all right? God, I want to thank you. God, I want to thank you. Watch this. Then I get up, and I'm feeling good about myself. I'm like, boy, that was intense right there. Yeah, God, thank you. Thank you, God, for letting me worship. And before I could get into bed, God started to read me. Like, here, you need to work on this. You still got that spirit of stinginess in you. You need to become a better giver. And he started reading a list of stuff. I'm like, man, God, I just finished worshiping you, and all you got for me is what's wrong with me? Because whenever you get closer to God, just the presence of God begins to identify. That's why Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus gets closer and he says, Lord, look, between you and I, I got some stuff back there. And I want to let you know I got to get it right and I'm ready to get it right. I wish I had three worshipers. Somebody ought to jump up and say, God, I got some stuff back there. And I know you already know 
but you want to make sure that I know that you know that I know. And I've come to let you know, God, thank you for not killing me while I was doing that. Thank you for not destroying me while I was doing that. Thank you for loving me through that. Thank you for giving me for that. Thank you for not giving up on me when I was right there. Do I have anybody in here that'll jump up real quick and begin to give God worship? Because you know, the closer I get to him, I recognize. Watch this. Oh, God. So, if we're going to do church Jesus' way, we got to make this a place of opportunity. Number one is the opportunity to prioritize instruction. When we come in here, we ought to leave a little bit more knowledgeable than we were when we came in the door. Yeah, yeah. I told the ministers the other day, in church, we get confused about preaching and teaching. I try to do on Sunday preaching. I'm seeing beautiful educators in here this morning. Here's the difference. Preaching is trying to motivate you and inspire you. Teaching is trying to transition knowledge. They're not the same. Just because I'm loud does not mean I'm teaching. Just because my voice rolls out well does not mean I'm teaching. It might mean I'm preaching. But if I can bring them together, I hope I can inspire you, but also instruct you. So watch this. It prioritizes instruction. It provokes inspection. But then it produces inspiration. Okay. This is supposed to be the place whether you're here online or here in person, that you walk in feeling depressed, but walk out conquering depression. Okay. Something is wrong with church if you walk in angry and walk out angry. You're supposed to walk in the door holding a grudge but walk out of the door releasing forgiveness. You're supposed to walk in the church envious and jealous, but walk out of the church with gratitude and praise. Something should happen while you're in the room, whether you're online or in person, that causes you to be inspired. Watch this. I see it. Go back to Luke chapter 19. I got to go. Verse 4. This brother comes into church. Watch this, Jerry. Not a building. Stop worrying about a building and, and focus on the encounter. He encounters Jesus. Okay. I had a dilemma with the text, Darlene. Here's the dilemma. Verse 4 says, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree. See, see, when we preach this text, we make it sound like Zacchaeus had never met Jesus until he went in the tree. No, Dr. Angie, I want to suggest Zacchaeus was already with Jesus, but he could not enjoy the level of relationship with Jesus that he desired. So he said, in order for me to experience him at another level, it's not up to him, it's up to me. Okay. Okay. One of the problems with church, as it had traditionally been done, <laughs> watch this, Chris. If you left church and you had not encountered God, it was Bishop's fault. Okay. If you left church and you had not encountered God, it was Minister Earl's fault. If you left church 
and you had not encountered God, the musicians weren't on point today. If you left church and had not encountered God, it was the movement of the lights and the cameraman. I'm letting us off the hook. How do you expect to encounter God at another level and you have not changed your position? The only thing that changes in Luke 19 is Zacchaeus says, I have reached my threshold of being able to have relationship with Jesus in this spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run ahead, position myself for greater intimacy. I don't know who needs to hear this. Maybe, and watch this, don't make it physical. Make it spiritual. Maybe the reason why you're not as intimate with God has nothing to do with the building, has nothing to do with me, has nothing to do with Minister Earl, has nothing to do with the psalmist, has nothing to do with the musicians. Maybe Facebook is the reason why you're not getting closer to God. Maybe the position you're in needs to change. Watch this. Watch this. Here's what's so crazy. Marino, watch this. This brother doesn't repent. He doesn't ignore his shortcomings. He simply runs ahead. Okay. I, I think I wrote this on my paper. The only time it's all right to be ahead of God is in worship. The only time it's okay to be ahead of God is in worship. Why? Because praise invokes him. Okay? See, here's what I've learned. Some kind of a way, I gotta go. Church has made us think the only place we can meet God is in here. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I see Sister Shannon over there. Fifth Sunday, I'm telling you, Pastor LJ messed me up last week because he said some kind of a way we've forgotten that the anointing moves. It's transportable. This is not the only place where the anointing of God is. If I am really a child of God, the anointing of God is wherever I show up. Okay. I got a question for you since the preacher last week kept asking questions. How can your job still be hellish and you've been there three years? How can witches still be ruling in your workplace and you have worked there for a year because once I come in the anointing comes with me watch this y'all when they hire you folks ought to quit when they hire me my first day in the workplace demons ought to get so nervous then they say, I can't, I, can't, I can't continue to work here. They ought to start being so upset because the presence, or is it, I don't carry the anointing with me. So fifth Sunday, I'm letting y'all know in the house, fifth Sunday, this room gonna be closed because we're gonna take all this anointing somewhere that they at least expect us to show up. Watch this. And we're going to dress alike so that when we get there, they'll say, see, God, I got to go. Do you remember when Peter was at the campfire before he had done anything? They said, aren't you with him? We're not supposed to have to announce who we are. 
we're supposed to just show up and when we show up they say you saved ain't you I can I can look at you you saved ain't you uh-huh look at you you're born again ain't you not perfect but you're born again ain't you you one of them Christians ain't you not perfect but you one of them Christians I want you to understand I gotta go that if this place is gonna become the place of opportunity it prioritizes instruction it provokes inspection it produces inspiration and then lastly it promotes invocation I ain't got time to deal with it but watch this this is what that means <sighs> y'all ready if this place really becomes who God has ordained it to be by the time church is over oh God and we go to get in our car even if you rode to church by yourself you won't ride home by yourself. I don't understand, Bishop. When does Zacchaeus invite Jesus to the crib? Thank you, Peacock. Zacchaeus doesn't say, Lord, can you come home with me? No. What's supposed to happen in here is our worship is supposed to be so intense that Jesus comes in here on Sunday and says, let me see. Who am I going home with? It really should be a contest that I know he's going to pick somebody in here to go home with for Sunday dinner. So Lord, I ain't trying to cause the person down there to be shortchanged, but if you're looking for somebody to go home with. Now here's what's so amazing, and I'm out. There's enough of God For him to decide, I'm going home with the Frost. I'm going home with Peacock. I'm going home with Marino. I'm going home with Chris. I'm going home with Chris. God wants the relationship to not be driven by a room. God told me this and I'm finished. He said, I'm so hungry to be with them I want to go home with them I'm out of time the question is are you ashamed to let him go home y'all know I'm a very pragmatic guy so I had to ask myself here's the here's the dilemma with the text Dr. Angie Zacchaeus didn't know he might come home with him. So I wonder if Zacchaeus had to say, Jesus, hold, hold, stay right here. Let me, let, me, let me go in first. I got some stuff I need to put up before you. Woo. I ain't know you were going to try to come in the house with me. Woo, 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 woo. Hold on, Jesus. I wonder if on the way home, Zacchaeus called up Miss Zacchaeus and said, hey, baby. I messed around and worshiped out here today and Jesus is coming home with me. Can you, can you put my lottery tickets in that Johnny Walker red head? <laughs> Don't throw it away. Put it in the garage, girl, because we might hit. I, I wonder if, I wonder if when Zacchaeus was coming home and Jesus was walking with him, the neighbors were coming out saying, Zacchaeus, I didn't even know you go to church. Three invitations. Three invitations. Invitation number one is to accept the Lord as your Savior. Invitation number two is to rededicate your life to Christ. Invitation number three is to become a part of this global fellowship, whether in person or around the world. Now, let me tell y'all something. I'm different because pastors are like, the people ain't coming back to church. I'm like, man, why are y'all crying about who's not coming in the building? Just because... 
we ought to know God has knocked the walls down. There are people right now, I've been getting messages on the screen, that are around the world. I'm okay. I just want to see people get closer to God. I don't care whether you're in the building or not. I mean, obviously, I want to see people come back in the building, but we so consumed with being mad because church is being done differently. Maybe God was just tired of what we were doing. So wherever you are, I just want you to respond to the invitation. If you desire to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, text the word accept to 71441. If you desire to rededicate your life to Christ, text the word restart to 71441. If you desire to become a part of the Mount specifically and walk in covenant with us, text the word Mount Up to 71441. Now, I'm going to do it a little differently today. If you're in the room and you know that, you know what, because of COVID, I kind of took a step back with God. I feel like me and God not where we were before COVID. And you want to fix that today. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm still not going to, we're not going to have any one-on-one -on -one interaction, but when we go off the air, if you're in this room and you want to say, God, I need to get my relationship with you back where it was, I'm going to ask you to just come stand right here. Just come stand. If it's not you, I promise you we're not going to put you on the spot. I'm going to give the benediction, and then I'm going to simply pray with you right here. But look, the one thing that has been consistent that I know God has told me, he said, I don't care where y'all have church or how you have church. You can't stop giving an opportunity for people to make a decision to be with me. You can change it and make it more modern, but I still need, watch this. I can't just pray for everybody to get saved. I still think that God wants us to make a tangible decision, whether it's using text technology or coming to stand right here. So if you're in this room and you desire to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, rededicate your life to Christ, or become a part of this church family, just come stand right here. Last piece before I'm out. We're getting ready to go on a soul campaign. It's not about this room. It's about bringing people into relationship with God. So what we're going to be doing very soon is asking everyone, whether you're online or whether you're in the room, to give us one name. Bless you, man. You can stand right here. Just give us one name and an email of someone that you are praying to come into their relationship with Christ. That's all we're going to ask. We're going to start doing that the first of the month. And we're going to pray for those names every day because the world getting worse by the day. And I just want to let you know, we got to get serious about not just getting closer to God ourselves, but bringing someone else to God as well. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before the throne of God to the only almighty God be glory and majesty, dominion and power. I declare we are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come, blessed when we go. In Jesus' name, amen.